Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Kwame Asa'ala, Kuhu Loimla, Yahweh Bahasim Yahusai, Bahasim Rukhach Hadash, of honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who were well, and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. I just want to say the water toward the Akim and Akwa, that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes and commandments of Yahweh Bahasim Yahusai to the best of their ability. This is Shah Nanawa, just coming at you with another quick lesson. Praying that it's edifying by the spirit. I'll just get a little walk in. I think we do a walk and talk. Back to the basics. Going off into Esau, Edom, which is the biblical name for the so-called white man or so-called white race. Because they're not actually white. That's the reason why we say so-called. They're actually pinkish to reddish in color. And the scripture describes Esau as being so red. Came out red. You get that account in um, Genesis 25. And um there's no such thing as white people, basically. And there's no such thing as black people. You know, there's just different shades of brown. This man that actually um, gave the world nationalities with colors, man. He actually calls so-called Mexicans, Hispanics, call them brown, right? He called the so-called blacks black. He calls himself white, but those are not nationalities. Those are not ethnicities. We all have a biblical nationality, and we all come from um, one of the sons of Noah's. Pretty much, Shem, Ham, Japheth. Us so-called blacks, we are Shemites. We are not Hamites. We are not Africans. We have nothing to do with the Africans. We are a totally different set of people. And the, the actually, um, Sonderman Bible Dictionary, it actually says that. It says that um, Ham was the progenitor of the dark races, but not the Negroes. So you can look that up. Sonderman Bible Dictionary. You can you know, Google it or you can probably ask Siri, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But the information is out there, you know, and we always advise to look up things, look up words, check out, you know, the etymology of words, and things of that nature. But just going off into Esau and all the atrocities that he's done in the earth, you know, because the Lord has given this man this plan, you know, for a time, for, you know, just a, a short time span. And that time span is counting down on this man very quickly right now. He's getting to the point of his his time is running out. And the scripture talks about uh, how because he had but a short time, he's going to come down with great wrath. So you can pretty much bet on seeing a lot of atrocities, man, in the soon future. Right. So let's get. I want to start with this uh, Galatians 6 and 7. Just back to the basics as far as like this man, he has to pay for what he has done. He has to pay for it, man. He's going to pay for it. See, they're just thinking that, okay, we're going to go out. We're going to vote for Donald Trump. <clears throat> He's our um, lifeline. He's going to carry us on, set us up for the next hundred years. And that's just not the case, man. This place is through already because... It's pretty much on the brink of civil war. And as I was listening to the elder Malcolm, he was talking about how that civil war is going to lead up to race wars. And they got this Trump rally in New York, sold out Coliseum, 20,000 or so people. Um, they got standing room only. They got jungle Trump outside for those that couldn't get in. And it's all kinds of people that support Trump, from so-called Mexicans, from so-called blacks, so-called Jews, so-called, you know, every every race of people that's here in the Americas, they support, it's some of them that support Trump, right? But just because they support Trump, that's not going to make any difference if a civil war breaks out, because they're not going to be able to tell you no different. They, you know, they're just going to see you as a brown person, and they're going to be gunning for you. It just is what it is. So, but anyway, this is Galatians 6 and 7. Be not deceived. Yahweh is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So what did Esau sow in the earth? He sowed captivity and slavery, bondage to the children of Israel. So he's going to reap that. Let's get on Revelation 13. Let's start at verse 9. 
And it reads, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. So now why is it captivity is being spoken of in, in, in the book of Revelation? Why is that being spoken of? People, you know, you never see um, Christians, um, you know, explain that. Somebody led somebody into captivity and we know clear well that the so-called white man led the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans into captivity. And not only led us into captivity, still have us captives to this very day. Now, there's a scripture that talks about, I want to think, I think that's um, Exodus 21 or so. Let me see, Salakia, so uh, scripture that talks about he that stilleth a man. See, they, they just think that, you know, things are just going to go on. They're going to, you know, they're going to continue on ruling forever. Nothing's ever going to be done about the shit that they've done. They don't think, they don't feel as if what happened to us can happen to them. That's pride. And actually, that's just their um, unbelief. Because they're not spiritual people like that. They don't believe. They actually believe that, they, you know, their God is white. Our God is white. <laughs> you know? And they don't have that spiritual insight into the matter like that. But anyway, this is, let me see, Exodus 21 to 18, no, 16, it's like you. When he that stilleth the man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. So they stole us. We're still in their hands. So guess what? They're going to have to pay. And see, when you go into these law, statutes, and commandments, those laws, these laws right here, they're going to be written on the minds and hearts of the children of Israel in the kingdom. So we're going to come down with, with, with you know, brute force on these people. We're going to work this shit out of them like how they worked us. Scripture says give them double. Why does it say give them double? Because you reap what you sow. We just read that in Galatians 6 and 7. They're going to have to pay for what they've done to the children of Israel. And when you get to talking to them about it, or, you know, we're on the highways and byways, and, and even the so-called, you know, the, the people that hate it the most is the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. How dare you? You would want to put white people in slavery when that, that would make you no different than them. Hey, take it up with the Lord, man. <laughs> take it up with the Lord, man. And the Lord going to knock off you simple-ass niggas, too, man. So, lock here. Let's get, um... Job 34 and 29 to just prove that the Lord, he deals with nations of people all together. Oh my goodness gracious. Salakia. Okay, so um, Job 34 and 29, when he giveth quiet Salakia, damn Bluetooth playing games. Job 34 and 29, when he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who then can behold him, whether it be done against a nation or against a man only? See that? So the Lord, he deals with nations. He deals with every single individual within the nation. He deals with the damn cat, rat, dog, the birds, you name it, whatever's in that nation, the damn leaves falling off the trees. He deals with the entire earth. Because he's all powerful. Right? So this man, he, yeah, he's definitely gonna have to pay as a nation of people, their children. Because when you go up into that Psalms 137, I think like verse 8 or so. Oh, let's start at verse 7. Psalms 137, verse 7. Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it. Even to the foundation thereof. So this man was a he. This is not the first time he has rounded us up, man. You know, he sacked the, uh, the temple and, and 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 rounded up Jake and you know starved Jake out and done all these atrocities to our people. So they're going to have to pay for that. And this is a prayer. This is a future coming prophecy for these people. Verse eight, Psalms one thirty-seven and eight. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be. That rewarded thee as thou hast served us. So we're going to be happy. 
Now that's going to be a whole different spirit that's going to be on us to be happy to do because right now oh my goodness we are um we don't have that that particular spirit right now now don't don't get me wrong jake riling up jake getting pissed the fuck off jake is um you know a uh, uh, sick of this place because they've worn out the saints and jake going and, and the lord is going to place a spirit on jake to really come up and, and to get down out here man right Okay, so it goes on to say, Happy Shelly B, that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. This is what they was doing to us. Taking our little babies, man, by the feet, swinging them, you know what I'm saying? Smashing them against big ass rocks and trees and whatever else they wanted to slam our kids into. We ain't gonna even talk about the sword, the killing of the, you know, um, you know the deletions of our, 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 our you know, foremothers with, with babies within them. See, so, and it's only right. But they don't they don't feel that way. They're just looking at this day and time like, oh, man, that was a long time ago. Forget that shit. And matter of fact, you should forget it just because there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> this is the way that they think, man. These people are proud as hell. They really don't think that what they've done is going to come back to haunt their asses. There's a scripture that talks about that as well. They didn't consider. I'm not sure if that's Psalms. Let's see. Psalm chapter 50. Oh yeah, 50 and 21. Psalms 50 and 21. These things hast thou done, and, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. So they think that the Lord is with them. And actually, in a way, he, he, he is, I mean, was, you know, because he was actually using them to punish us. But they're still going to have to pay for what they've done. Now, the, 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 the ways of the Lord are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We're prepared praising. So hey, we can't even fathom, you know, even the reason why he, he, he set it up the way that he set it up like that. Um, but we can't fathom, man, what the Lord is going to give us, man, in his kingdom, man. We can't uh, fathom being a royal people because we we're in these we're living life right now and we've never been royal in this life like that. I mean, not to say it like, you know, I'm talking about since these past 500 or so years. Now, we haven't had no royalty at all. We've just been trampled on, stomped out, made to pay taxes. You know what I'm saying? Brutal work hours. You know, slavery was 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 damn damn so a hell of a um curse on us you know what i'm saying because these people they didn't show no mercy and that's what um the lord had he said because you've shown no mercy you you should uh, you you won't receive no mercy roughly paraphrasing it actually says to give them double so can you imagine just you know just a basic slave movie they don't give you everything that actually really happened to us in those movies but you can there's some pretty brutal slave movies out here that you can see the type of shit that was going on with us and can you imagine us giving them double? They're not going to be able to take it, man. But guess what? They're going to have to. They're going to have to swallow that, um, drink the dregs of that cup, roughly paraphrasing. They're going to have to, um, they're going to have to endure. The Lord is not playing no games about that, man. That's going to come to pass. So I'm going to end out there. I pray that this lesson was edifying. With that, Kwame Yashallah and the Bible Ball.